Most of the people wrapped up in President Trump's impeachment scandal have one thing in common. They all have official roles with the U.S. government, with one big exception. President Trump's personal point man, Rudy Giuliani. Does Rudy Giuliani have any business getting involved in U.S.-Ukrainian politics? Rudy Giuliani doesn't work for the White House or the State Department or the military. He's Donald Trump's personal lawyer, but he's played a central role in U.S.-Ukraine relations. And he's become one of Trump's most loyal defenders on television. There's nothing wrong with taking information from Russians. I'm not even know if that's a crime, colluding about Russians. A campaign finance violation? Give me a break. Rudy was once a beloved national figure. America's mayor. Rudy Giuliani! But today he's no longer mayor and no longer widely beloved. So how did America's mayor wind up here? What's happened to Rudy? What has happened to Rudy Giuliani? Rudy Giuliani started his career in public life in the 80s as the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York. As a prosecutor, Giuliani took on the mafia and Wall Street insider trading. He was a brilliant prosecutor. There's no question about it. I mean, he gained fame legitimately. Andrew Kurtzman was a New York City Hall reporter when Giuliani was mayor. He perfected the art of the perp walk which uh, humiliated people who had been arrested by having them parade before photographers. He also knew how to get in front of the cameras himself. Uh, Giuliani was a pioneer in using the position of U.S. attorney to turn yourself into a media star. You really destroy the power of the mafia. During this time, crime in New York reached historic levels, and that led Rudy to his next act. It was very natural that someone who had made his uh, fame as a crime fighter would then run for mayor. Giuliani became mayor of New York City in 1994. Crime became his focus, and it fell during his administration. But today, it's debated whether his policies actually caused that. The crime drop started before he was in office. It continued after he left office. It was also visible in most other major American cities. Uh, so was it really something he was responsible But whether or not Giuliani's approach to crime was effective, it was definitely aggressive. His administration implemented stop and frisk, which allowed police to stop anyone and search them for any reason. The reduction in crime came at the expense of the African-American community. The last few years of Giuliani's term were racked by outrage over police violence, after men like 23-year-old Amadou Diallo and 26-year-old Patrick Dorsman were shot by police, even though they were unarmed. Giuliani had to step down! Enough is enough! 2001 was Giuliani's last year in office after serving two full terms. September 11th was election day in New York City. I mean, that was the day where New Yorkers were supposed to literally move on from Rudy Giuliani. We began walking north, and then suddenly uh, the other tower imploded. We kind of ran for our lives. It was a desperate, desperate moment. His performance over the next few weeks and months was magnificent. The best way to get your children to stop being afraid is to stop being afraid yourself. You know, his message was, we're going to do fine. We're going to be OK. And I think that's what really resonated with people. It's like this kind of father figure who, you know, reassured people that we were going to get through this. Giuliani was Time's Person of the Year. He was knighted by the Queen. He couldn't even go to a restaurant without getting a standing ovation. God bless you, Rudy. Get over here, Rudy. He was one of the most beloved men on the planet. And, you know, what he did next, you know, in retrospect, may not have been um, the best use of that situation. Instead of staying in public life, Giuliani cashed in. He started a company that advised cities around the world on security. He worked for countries like Qatar and companies like Purdue Pharma. In 2006 alone, he earned $11.4 million, giving 124 different speeches. But by 2007, he was ready to get back into politics. He ran for president. And for a time, he was the Republican frontrunner. But then his campaign collapsed. The Republican Party of 2008 wasn't quite ready for a pro-LGBT, pro-choice New Yorker. Also, he might have talked about 9-11 too much. There's only three things he mentioned in a sentence, a noun and a verb and 9-11. I mean, there's nothing else. He really milked his post-9-11 celebrity for all it was worth. He was never humble about it. It was a complete disaster, complete disaster. He not only lost his bid for president, but also he kind of lost his 9-11 halo. 
And then the question was, you know, what does he do then? Giuliani became a regular on Fox News. He started taking on more questionable security clients, a Ukrainian mayor, an Iranian group once designated as a foreign terrorist organization. But then another New Yorker ran for president. Donald Trump and Giuliani weren't close friends in the 90s and 2000s, but they knew each other. They were both big figures in New York. They did groundbreakings and parades and attended each other's third weddings. They even did this. Donald, I thought you were a gentleman. But in 2016, they were suddenly useful to each other. Trump did not have a lot of Republican friends, and Giuliani wanted a path back to power. Giuliani endorsed Trump right before the New York primary, and he became an important supporter. What I did for New York, Donald Trump will do for America! This is also when he started showing a willingness to share conspiracy theories. Go online and put down Hillary Clinton illness. Take a look at the videos for yourself. But then the entire Trump campaign almost ended. The Washington Post published a video of Trump saying vulgar things about women. Donald Trump and the fight for political survival. Lots of Republicans abandoned or distanced themselves from Trump. I'm out. I, I can no longer endorse Donald Trump for president. Giuliani stepped up. Uh, I know Donald Trump for... Almost 30 years doesn't reflect the man uh, that I know. He's always dealt with women with great respect. So it was Giuliani who stood by him. And, you know, Trump appreciated that. Donald Trump wins the presidency. Rudy got up here. After Trump won, it looked like Giuliani's loyalty would pay off. Giuliani's work with shady foreign clients over the years turned out to be a bad look. So he went back to his law firm until Trump needed a lawyer. Then Michael Cohen gets arrested, his offices get raided, and suddenly the job of quote unquote personal attorney, but for Trump world that's always meant a kind of weird sort of fixer role, uh, opens up. Giuliani takes it. He told the New York Times, the last year and a half I haven't been on television. Frankly, I've missed it. Giuliani became Trump's personal attorney in April 2018. At some point after that, he heard about a conservative media theory involving Democratic presidential candidate Joe Biden's son, Hunter Biden, and Ukraine. It's a case that is crying out to be investigated. It seems like it was Giuliani who picked up this connection from elsewhere in the conservative universe and then brought it as a proposition to Trump. I don't think we know that for an absolute certainty, uh, but his proposition to kind of get back in the game. But Trump bought into the idea. Testimony in the impeachment hearings revealed that he started directing U.S. officials to work with Giuliani on getting Ukraine to announce an investigation of Biden. Mr. Giuliani demanded that Ukraine make a public statement announcing the investigations, and we knew these investigations were important to the president. When this impeachment happens, the two most responsible people for it are number one, Donald Trump, and number two, Rudy Giuliani. Today, Giuliani is still Trump's personal lawyer, but his work in Ukraine has made Trump the third president to ever be impeached. And Giuliani is being investigated by the U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, the same position that he once held. Rudy Giuliani has always wanted to be the center of attention and always has had this knack for making himself the center of attention. He's had several opportunities in his life to just sort of back away, be rich, do paid speaking, and sort of ride off into the sunset. He wants to be important. He wants to be involved, whether that's a long shot presidential run, whether that's being a Trump surrogate after this incredibly embarrassing videotape, or whether it's getting involved in some kind of uh, nefarious international crimes. He always wants to get back in the action.